So, what do we have today? News. Let's focus on that. That's why I can't do <laughs> Hi! No. No, no. No. Hey everybody, welcome to Aperture Chat. I'm not good at improv Tom. <laughs> Apparently Ryan can't keep a straight face either today. No, I was just waiting to see if you laugh first. <laughs> I'm Ryan. <laughs> so we've got news because it's Thursday, and that's when we do more news. All right. So, first thing up is Dronestagram. I did not know this thing existed until I saw it. Uh, well, if you owned a drone, I'm sure you would know about it. I, I'm sure I would. It's Instagram for drones. It's exactly what it is. It's Instagram for drones. Uh, they held their first uh, awesome potential... Oh, wait, what is what they call this? Their first drone photo contest. They... They had a photo contest. You had to take your picture from a drone. It was actually kind of cool. Did he hit the eagle with a drone? He did not hit the eagle with a drone. So, or is it so vulture? The, the, uh, it looks like a vulture because the, the yeah. face is wrong. Um, so the first winner of the Dronestagram photo contest was actually flying just above a vulture or a hawk I'm or just, something. I think three seconds later, it's... <laughs> it's <laughs> Probably. Like drone, fucking drone bits and bird bits. But he got the picture, and that's the important part. Uh, the second one was of a group of people just standing around as the guy was flying the drone. You can even see him with the controller in his hands. Which is fine. Which is fine. It looks kind of cool. And the third one was like a sunrise over a villa, which... Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So, they some pretty decent images, and it's a thing. It's I didn't even know this existed, so I put it in the news. Yep, it's probably it's, been around it's for a while. Funny how that's a consumer thing, and people just screw with photos and stuff. Yeah, because the photos out of a GoPro aren't that good, really. Still photos, so video is very good, though. Maybe they did frame caps. Even frame cap or what? Nineteen twenty by ten eighty. Yeah, or four K, which is what twenty four eighty by. 4600. Because uh, remember, in the 2K, 4K, it's width, not height. They changed yeah. it. So it's 2048 by 4096 because it's 2 to 1. Yep. 1 to 2. So, whatever. Yay. <laughs> so, if you have drone pictures, I'd like to see some of them. And I then just, I want to uh, see your drone because yeah. I want to play with it. I just I really want to play with Yeah, we want to play with drones. So if you have drones, let us know because we'll come, we'll come hang out with you and drink beer and fly your drone. Not at the same time. Unless that's okay. I I would I think I would have a lot of we'll, fun doing we'll, that. We'll bring the double bag. Yeah, you can't you shouldn't do that. That's not good. So right. electric objects. It's a company trying to bring back the digital photo frame. They recently came out with the EO one, which is a nineteen twenty by ten eighty IPS wooden framed display. Android based computer, which you can send your photos to over Wi Fi and it shows on a IPS color, very high resolution, high contrast display. Um, the interesting thing about this, I mean, it's obviously being kickstarted, um, like anything would be now. IPS display is what takes us to the next level in the modern digital photo frame thing. An IPS display has a very high angle of view. So wherever you're standing in a room, an IPS display looks very, very good. It's so much better than a normal LCD until you see it. You don't understand how much better the blacks look, how much brighter the colors are, how much more angle of view there is. So this should be very cool. This 1920 by 1080 IPS display with an Android computer behind it should be very cool. The MSRP is going to be $500 with a Kickstarter at $300, which is probably where they're going to sell 80% of these. I have no doubt it's already been kickstarted successfully, almost. No, not quite yet. Well, I mean... It's probably successful by now, but, but it's I, not over yet. It's not over yet. Um, it should be nice. It's, I mean, it's, it's a twenty-three inch picture frame. I mean, that's decent it's, size. It's a lot of money. You could buy a um, like a forty-eight inch TV for that, like a nice forty-eight inch TV. Yeah, you could. Which so. you could also just put a big wooden frame on and stick on a wall. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could do that too. So yeah, hook it up to your Xbox and watch pictures on it. It's a good bit of money. Although but, we know anyone who's done that, Grant. I mean, that's what you do with Xbox 360s now. Yeah. Which is sad. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting seeing it, someone try to bring that back. It is, and it's actually something that, you know, if I couldn't find a way to 
build my own, I would probably back this. $300 is so much money. I'd rather buy a single $300 video, like actual computer monitor, than a picture frame. Now I have enough money to run Lightroom. Oh no! Wait, you could still use it. Sort of. Sort of. Not really. It still functions. It doesn't lock your catalog out, basically. Yeah, so basically you can still use it for the library function, which actually you could download the trial, never pay a dime for it, and when your trial is up, the library function still works. You just lose access to the develop module and the map module. Which is sort of a whole point. The develop module is kind of the entire point of Lightroom. But you could use it to catalog things. No, it's, it's so that you can get a job back out of Lightroom effectively. Because there's no that. easy way to export Lightroom changes this is true. to a file once Lightroom is no longer part of the picture. So having a Lightroom that works just at least in library works. You can so also you use the quick settings, the, the quick develop settings, because they don't go through the develop module. They, they, you can use them in the library module. So if you made 8,000 presets each, during your trial, you can make 8,000 presets and use Lightroom for free. All right. I should try this. Make a set of presets with a 10% 0.1 stop change of exposure, 0.1 stop change of color in each one of the bars so you can color balance and exposure balance in Lightroom. <laughs> or, or, you know, I'm just going to... Well, I already paid for Lightroom outright before they went to the subscription on it. So I can use my Lightroom 5 forever at this mm -hmm. point. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. And, and seriously, the subscription now with, with Photoshop is 10 bucks a month. Really. I should really do that. Well, you get... The brand new CC 2014 Photoshop, you get Lightroom and all the updates, it's 10 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. 10 bucks a month if you agree to pay for 10 bucks a month for the year. Uh, I think it's 15 a month if you want the no contract option. It's still not bad. Nope. Not bad at all. So. It's much more reasonable than a thousand fucking dollars. Yes. Hey, I think more people will actually pay for their software now. Hey, they and hit the working. one million uh, subscri paid subscriptions on Creative Cloud already. Yep, I'm sure their their percentage of actual paid software has gone up from 45 percent to oh, whatever yeah. it is now. It's, it must have. Yeah, that was. I mean, that was such a big issue that drove this whole change. It was. It was at its worst. 40 percent paid subscriptions or paid users of Photoshop that they admitted is how bad it was. Yeah, I mean, 60 percent of people aren't paying for the program that they're using every day a lot of the times. Yeah. No, the subscription model worked because I know I was one of those people who converted over from using not completely legit versions to being a paid subscription member to the cloud. And I pay for the full suite now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 50 bucks a month. So I, I can't it's beat a lot, that. But it's, it's a lot, but... When you use it. But, yeah, when you, when you add in the photography and the podcast I use, Premiere, Audition, Photoshop, Lightroom... I'm sure I'll get into After Effects at some point at the rate we're going. Yeah. No, so. it's, it's Adobe has their head on straight here. Yeah. I know some people don't like the whole Creative Cloud thing, I, probably with good reason, but... You know what? I'm a huge fan right now. To be absolutely honest with you. Well, it allows people to purchase the software that wouldn't have otherwise. Yeah, exactly. Like, I would never spend $2,000 on software, which is what that no. is. So, yeah. Very cool. And by the time I paid for what the entire suite would have cost me in the monthly subscription, two new versions would have come out by then. Yep. So that's what they're betting on, too, is yeah. you, do you understand that? How do we get into Creative Cloud? I don't know. The last time Canon released a 100 to 400 millimeter L-series lens was 1998. Because nobody cares. 16 years have gone by nobody since cares. they have updated this lens. I'm doing it finally this year. It's going to be shown at Photokina. It's going to be a $2,400 price tag for 100 to 400 millimeter, 4556 IS stabilized, all new lens package. It's going to use the 82 millimeter uh, front yeah, lens, which, which is different. They copied Sigma for, which is strange. Because the old one was a 77 millimeter, and this is going to be an 82. Yeah. Because Sigma, you know, that's odd. Yeah. No, it's cool though. It's I have an 82 millimeter nice filter. I have a 77 to 82 step up, so I could use it on both my lenses. Yep. That's the Tamron. Is also 82. No, Tamron's 77. What's the, oh the 82 is your Sigma. The 82 is the Sigma. 
Yeah, well, it looks like a nice so it, mid range between the the bigger one and the smaller one. Well, I might actually, if I was going to buy it, not that I'm going to throw down twenty four hundred dollars for it, but if I was going to buy it, it would be if I was doing more sports, because I find my seventy to two hundred doesn't go far enough. Mm -hmm. But the hundred I could use because the hundred end I could use for like wide shots. Yeah. And the 400 would be great. The other option is to get a teleconverter, mm -hmm. which with the 2.8 would drop me to 5.6. Five, six. Five, six anyway, so. Yeah, I, that's, I mean, that was, that's my choice, which is it's, if I was going to go for 400 millimeters, that's what I'd do. Having rented one, see how it works. I, I need to rent one and try it with that lens. I don't know how the Canon one is. Does the Canon one work very well with the Tamron lens? I don't know. It's not on the approved lens list. I don't know how that's going to go for you. No third party is on the approved lens list, though. I don't know that it fits. That's what I'm concerned with. Yeah. So if you have a Canon 2X teleconverter, I'd like to see if it fits on my lens. I don't know anyone who does. Well, neither do I, which means I'm going to hunts. I don't know that they have one. If they have an 85L Prime, they probably have a teleconverter there. In that box. You know the, the case they have with all the Canon lenses? I bet you there's one in there. Teleconverters are weird for Canon. They are. Because the only the, I mean, the Nikon ones they have are the new ones, so yeah. I don't know if... They have the Canon ones. Yeah, worst case, I'll get it from borrow lenses. And, I mean, it's like, <laughs> can you rent it for 10 minutes? <laughs> it's like, actually, custom, I, set custom period, five minutes. <laughs> All right, thanks. No, it doesn't fit. And you hand it back. <laughs> Here's $4. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm too lazy to drive up there. I'd rent it for like two days and have them ship it to me. <laughs> yeah, it would cost $45. Uh, with shipping, it's with shipping and insurance. Twenty-seven dollars to ship. Yeah, I know. That's the worst part. Is that it paid more for the shipping than I would actually use it. Yep. So the darkest material on the planet is 0.05 percent darker than the previous this dark material on the planet. Um, carbon nanotubes. So that the big the reason why this is news is that it's much thinner uh, and can be produced at low heat. Yep. Yeah, that's that's what it was. It can be put on much thinner materials because it produces much lower heat. Vanta Black is the new darkest material on the planet, made by a UK nanosystems, Surrey nanosystems. It reflects as little radiation light as possible. It's 0.35% of reflected light, something like that. 0.035%. It's like, yeah, that thing. So it's, you can't see it, basically. I do love the, the comments that people were posting about this, because the picture they have up is because they make it on aluminum foil. Like, that's what they bake it on to, to make it. And aluminum foil, obviously, you know, it's almost impossible to keep completely flat. I mean, anyone who's used aluminum foil knows that. Um, and so, but the, you know, they're like, you basically can't see this. And people are like, I can see the black. No shit, you can see the black. But you can't see any of the wrinkles that are in it, even though they're there. That's the point. Yep. Yeah, people are just dumb. Yeah. That's not going to... Not gonna say that. But yeah, it's I, it's I actually a, it's much more easily produced and viable for space and stuff. Space yeah. and stuff. That's our Thursday news. No, that's it. Really, that's it. Tomorrow, we're gonna do something with cameras. You're gonna have to tune in to see what it is. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you.